Greetings to you, my friends. I'm Adamu of the monadic entity of the Pleiadian civilization. I will now continue with our series of conversations about unity consciousness. Attaining unity consciousness for yourself will be akin to you undertaking a great journey. As wondrous as this inner journey of self-discovery will be, it will be a journey nonetheless. And before one undertakes something as time and energy consuming as this is, one must be sure that one really wants to do this. So a very fair and logical question would be, why would I want to attain unity consciousness for myself? Or, to put it another way, what are the benefits of unity consciousness? And this is what I wish to address with you today. And then, at the end of this presentation, I will show you a quick technique that you can use to be sure if you should be choosing unity consciousness for yourself. In follow-up conversations, I will go on to tell you, in real and practical terms, how you can begin to walk this journey to unity consciousness. But before we proceed, if you have not yet watched the other videos in this series, or read their transcripts, may I request that you do so first. You will gain so much more from this video by watching the series in its correct sequence. But now, back to the subject at hand. The benefits of unity consciousness. The truth of the matter is that all is one. And the game of separation and duality that you are playing in is an illusion. As you attain unity consciousness, so you begin to see through the illusions. So you become more aware of the truth of matters. And that in itself is a great benefit, that you will know the truth rather than continuing to be a victim to the illusions. As you discover this most basic truth that all is one, so you align yourself with your higher self and indeed with the prime source creator of all. And then you begin to discover the truth of your own being too, you'll find answers to the basic questions that cannot be answered with pure logical or rational endeavor, like, why am I here? What is the purpose of life? And specifically, what is my purpose? And so you begin to discover who you really are. And this is no casual thing. Because you see, to discover who you really are is to discover that you are a creator being of immense power. Beings who are lost deeply in separation and duality very often crave power. But what you will find is something different from this. You will discover that you have the power to create and to co-create your entire reality. Now this is not the kind of ego gratifying power over others that beings of duality desire. It is you expressing your true innate nature as a gift to all of life around you. It will be right and good for you to do this. And you'll not be hurting or harming a single other in so doing, ever. And moreover, those in separation, no matter how much ego power they attain, never find satisfaction or peace. They never feel whole or complete. They never have enough. But when you are in right relationship with the oneness of all, you will always feel peace, satisfaction, completeness and wholeness. You will always have everything you need and you will always feel the abundance of having more than enough. Which brings me to the next point. Attaining unity consciousness means being in perfect communion with all of life. It means never again feeling the aching pain of separation. You will know true belonging. You'll be surrounded on all sides by the closest, most beloved others who will be your true soul family. The aching aloneness that is the hallmark of life and duality will become, for you, a thing of the past, a memory to be wandered at. And you will not be separate either from your emotions. Indeed, you will learn that your emotions are like inks and oils are to a master painter. You will discover that you can choose your emotions and use them as tools to create the experiences and outcomes that you desire. For indeed, that is what emotions were always meant to be. The energy of motion that motivates your spiritual reality, which is then manifest in your physical reality. 
These emotions should be yours to choose and use to create with. And they will be. And this is another of the gifts of unity consciousness. So there will never again be a reason for you not to feel the deepest peace and the most boundless joy. One of the greatest benefits of really seeing through the illusions is that you'll begin to see exactly where and how others might be trying to mislead you. You'll see through their lies and the complex arrangements of lies called politics and finance and religious organization and so on and so forth all become very apparent for what they are you'll cease to be beguiled by these phalanxes of smooth-talking snake oil salespeople. You will cease to give your energy to them. You'll withdraw from their games. And as you do, so you'll begin to see around you more and more beautiful souls. Ones just like you, who are standing in their truth, shining with integrity, giving their greatest gift and offering their energy and love unselfishly. As you find unity consciousness so you find others who themselves are finding unity consciousness. And you shall recognize each other and call each other brother and sister. You will know them to be your soul family, and you will know that these are the people you wish to engage with, to do soul business with, to share energy with, to co-create with, share your adventures with, share your love with. And as you do that, so more and more will begin to find you and your circle of interaction will increase. And slowly, yet quicker than you think, you will find yourself engaging only with others who are respectful of your energy, who seek always to treat you fairly, kindly, and compassionately. Indeed, to treat you as they wish to be treated. And this is just a smattering of the early gifts and pleasures of unity consciousness. There are many more that will come to you as you travel upon this road to oneness. Here are some examples. Meeting your galactic family is one absolute inevitability of attaining unity consciousness. But the best part is that you will be meeting those neighbors that are themselves of unity consciousness. This is a true guarantee that those you will meet will be of the highest and purest intent. What you call telepathy is actually the normal mode of communication for the unity conscious soul. For on some level, we are all the dreams and thoughts of the same great one mind. So then it is actually quite easy to share our thoughts when we wish it. And when you do meet your galactic neighbors, perhaps it will not surprise you to discover that they will communicate with you telepathically, mind to mind, heart to heart. Translocation is another benefit of unity consciousness. You see, all time is one time, all space, one space, and all energy is one energy. Because of this, it becomes possible to manifest an appropriate body anywhere you wish it to be. Higher order beings do this all the time. But you see, the fact of the matter is that all truly is one. So choosing to align yourself with anything other than this is choosing to align yourself with an illusion. And aligning yourself with an illusion is to believe in something that will seem temporarily true. For a short while, this will sustain you. And then its transitory nature will show itself to you, and in disappointment and disgust, you will give it up and start again trying to find something else that is more true. So you can continue in this stop-start bumper car relationship with the truth for all of eternity. Or you can cease giving yourself whiplash in your quest for the truth and simply align yourself right now with what is eternally true. You can begin to understand how and why all is one. And you can begin to live and behave congruent with that. And this will allow you to fly past the dodgems on the path of truth. Your path will be direct and true. And as a result of this, you will find yourself on a faster, more direct track into the higher levels of consciousness. You will find yourself in the company of magnificent beings of vast consciousness who are creating whole universe-spanning realities. And you will be able to work with them to bring to fruition the most beautiful and wondrous creations your heart can desire. And then, 
when it is exactly as you desire. Then you can play in those realities and relish the pleasure they bring to you. Which sounds a lot more pleasant to me than playing in a reality that you just don't understand, which brings pain and confusion and surrounds you with conflict and misery. Does it not? Now, I have really just touched upon some of the benefits of unity consciousness. These are some of the things you might experience as you travel that path home. But the truth of the matter is the path home will for each of you be as unique as you are. The other truth of the matter is that every single mode of consciousness will inevitably return to oneness, eventually. Because there is nowhere else to go. So really, it's just a matter for you to decide if you want to dally in duality for another cycle of this reality. Which might mean many more incarnations in duality. Because of course, it's the nature of duality that, just like quicksand, the more you struggle and fight against it, the deeper you sink into it. So here you are now, at this window of opportunity. The fact that you are listening to these presentations at all means you are ready to hear this message. You are at the very least evaluating it. And so here is your opportunity, your moment of choice, if you haven't already chosen. Here and now, you can choose or affirm your choice to step resolutely and boldly onto the path of oneness. Are you ready for that choice? Let us see, shall we? Let us check with your deepest truth that lies within your heart. You do that like this. Take a deep, deep breath in. Make sure you fill your lungs right down to your diaphragm muscle above your stomach. And slowly let that breath go. At the same time, letting go of any confusion and doubt inside of you. And again, breathe in peace and clarity taking it right the way in until your lungs are full and slowly breathe out, letting go of any fears that cloud your true knowing. One last time, a deep breath in, taking in peace and trust in yourself right the way in and slowly let it go, breathing out the last vestiges of self-doubt you were carrying. Now bring your awareness to your heart. Take a moment to sense the steady, rhythmic thump in your chest. And as you do, become aware of your energetic heart. This is often called the heart chakra. When you are feeling the deepest, most loving feelings for some beloved other, then you feel that in your energetic heart. So concentrate on that place within your being, your center of unconditional love. This is the true center of your being. This is where you are connected directly to the oneness of all. This is where you can access infinite wisdom, infinite compassion, infinite creativity, and infinite knowledge. Now you are going to access that wisdom and knowledge and find out what is right for you to do next. It works like this. You're going to remain very conscious of how your energetic heart feels while you hold two contrasting thoughts in your mind and see how they compare. Let's see what your heart says. So feel your heart and then hold this following thought in your mind. It's right for me to stay in duality for many lives more and to be a part of the eternal battle between light and dark. Feel your own heart and then make that statement in your mind and see how it feels for you. Does it feel good and right for you? Let's say it again. This time, say it in your mind with me. It's right for me to stay in duality for many lives more and to be a part of the eternal battle between light and dark. All right. Remember how that feels in your heart, but let go of the thought itself so that we can try a contrasting thought. Again, you are going to feel your energetic heart while holding this following thought in your mind. It's right for me to be walking the path of oneness now to be awakening directly to the fact that I am one with life, one with a planet, one with nature, and one with the eternal creator of all. Again, feel your heart very carefully. Does that feel right and harmonious? Or do you get a little leap of excitement perhaps? Or does it feel all wrong for you? Try saying the statement in your mind with me and see. Here we go again. It's right for me to be walking the path of oneness now 
and to be awakening directly to the fact that I am one with life, one with the planet, one with nature, and one with the eternal creator of all. All right, now compare the feeling you received in your heart from the first statement with the second statement. Which is right for you? If it is the latter, then I welcome you to the journey home. There is so much more I wish to say to you, but it will, I'm afraid, have to wait for the next presentation in the series. For indeed, that is where I will begin telling you how you might begin walking this path home to oneness. Feeling that decision in your heart is the first step. Next, I will be showing you the following few steps to get you firmly on the path homewards. But again, I welcome you. You are coming home. And on that note, I must leave you until we speak again. I love you with the heart of oneness. I am a Damu of the monadic entity of the Pleiadian civilization. <laughs>